Well, welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining today from the Fitchburg Office of Administration. Actually, I don't even know if you really call that. It's, <laughs> it's the administrator, your city administrator, Chad Brecklin. Uh, Brecklin, Office of Administration. Does that sound pretty cool? Sounds kind of Washington, D.C.-ish. It does. Yeah. What is your, like, corner called? Uh, administration. <laughs> Well, I don't know. The book says administration, <laughs> so it's administration. Uh, we didn't Employees bring... Employees may have other names for that area of the city hall. I don't know. Well, I call the uh, chair out front of your office the naughty chair. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, yeah, I don't know that there's a name for it. Lisa yeah. keeps it nice and spiffy sure. over there. Yep. Uh, and we're not going to spend more time talking about your corner <laughs> here. We're going to talk about update of what's going on around uh, in the city of Fitchburg. It's... Uh, it's bittersweet time of year because mm -hmm. uh, we've definitely made the transition, I think, uh, out of fall and into winter yeah. uh, early on. Uh, but that gives way to finally, when we turn the calendar month into November, that uh, budget mm -hmm. is wrapping up, which is mm -hmm. a good thing um, for a lot of reasons. It's yeah. a busy, long process, but a uh, pl process that plays out uh, uh, in front of uh, everybody. We're up to the council amendments, mm -hmm. uh, which we've already had the presentation on, yep. which I'm just stealing your thunder right now. Oh, you're fine. But uh, more importantly, uh, the final chance for people to comment on it and adoption of a 2020 budget. Right, right, 2024 budget. Tw did I say 14? You did, yeah. We're going back in time today. 14, 24, whatever. It's yeah. got a four in it. So we're unfortunately, well, Largely due to growth and the cost of goods, we're certainly spending more money in 2024 than we are in 2014. But uh, you are correct in that November is operating budget adoption time, and the city council has spent the last uh, really several months, uh, including the mayor's time and staff time, in developing the operating budget. Uh, this process really gets going in July, and we most recently at the October Committee of the Whole meeting uh, last week uh, had conversation about the amendments that had been submitted to the mayor's proposed budget. Uh, there was about three hours worth of conversation and, and uh, consideration by the city council members. And that will all culminate, as you mentioned, at the city council meeting on November 14th at 7.30 p.m. It will be an opportunity for anyone from the public to either tune in to FACT TV to watch what's going on, or they certainly are able to participate in the uh, meeting through the public hearing. Uh, and they're able to comment on any of the amendments and or the budget itself uh, in front of the city council, or they can also share comments uh, via email. Uh, when, and uh, folks can find the appropriate email distribution list on the city council website. Uh, and if they, it, there is, I mean, it hasn't happened in a while, but mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't get adopted that night, it can be adopted the next night if it plays out longer. And then that, not because of any specific reason or sure. anything, but yeah. I think it's good to throw it out there. We have, it's been a while, but you never know. And I do hope it remains a while before <laughs> we need to have another meeting uh, to, to, to get a pass budget. And there are special rules in place for this. Uh, Believe it or not, the council has agreed to a process that's been submitted by the mm -hmm. finance director on how the debate goes. We spent three hours uh, discussing the amendments last week, uh, which is intended to try to minimize the amount of time that's spent on the 14th of November taking up the budget. And uh, there, each, each council member is able to speak twice on each particular amendment, and they are timed with the length uh, amount of time that they can actually speak during each of those two occasions. And that is, is really designed to keep the meeting moving along. Mm -hmm. uh, ideally makes people be uh, clear and concise with the statements that they want to make, either in support of or in uh, opposition to, or perhaps even in some cases indifference to, um, whatever the particular matter at hand is. So uh, the city attorney will be present as she usually is, and she will help keep track of the number of times folks speak and how long they've spoken for. And uh, finance director will be there, I will be there, and other staff members who are needed. And it'll be uh, always informative, always uh, uh, an interesting process to watch as your local government and its elected officials and staff create that budget that is ultimately going to be passed that complies with our state levy limits that are in place is respectful of the impact on uh, the average residential taxpayer uh, in Fitchburg and also um, delivers the level of service that our residents uh, have grown to expect from its local government. 
I'm glad you were picking up what I was laying down on mm -hmm. the rules and everything mm -hmm. that goes into mm -hmm. it. It's not about the extra night. It's about the about things that are put in place uh, to help uh, keep it moving along and going through it. But uh, with the amount of amendments in there, uh, I think it's good to know mm -hmm. uh, how how that process actually plays out that night, so yeah. people at home know know what's going on. They'll get a reminder too of course. on the rules uh, th yep. that evening. But uh, yep. uh, more importantly, uh, we'll look to see a budget the next time that you, uh, you're here. But go online, FitchfordWI.gov. You can check out the meeting about talking about the amendments and of course how to uh, see the next mm -hmm. upcoming meeting here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, there's the, on the agenda side of things, we're seeing uh, steering committee meetings coming up, mm -hmm. uh, really focused on neighborhood yeah. plan meetings. Uh, tell us a little bit about what people uh, should expect, especially specific neighborhoods who could get involved. Right, so we have a couple of neighborhood plans that are just kicking off now. We have got a consultant uh, who's helping us guide through this process, but uh, the two neighborhoods specifically are the South Stoner Prairie neighborhood which is about 275 acres uh, south of Lacey Road and uh, east of Fitcherona Road that is uh, part of that particular neighborhood planning area. And then we're also looking at the Greenfield uh, neighborhood planning area, which is along Cyan Road uh, near Irish Lane. I believe about six or 700 acres in total, some of which is already uh, developed with, uh, from a rural subdivision. Both of those neighborhood plans have steering committees that have been created uh, composing of school district representatives, elected officials, perhaps plan commission members, uh, neighborhood association members, residents, uh, and uh, some city staff members to help guide the process of what does development look like in those particular neighborhoods. Uh, they have been identified previously in our comprehensive land use plan as future urban development areas. Uh, so what, what has now happened is since those have been identified as, as future urban development areas, the next step in developing those areas is to create a neighborhood plan. That neighborhood plan will be used to help guide uh, the development that, it's, that happens there, the type of development, the density of development, and those sorts of things. And throughout that process, there will be opportunities for public engagement and participation. I know uh, the steering committees are working on uh, identifying a, a date for their first uh, public meeting on those neighborhood plans. I believe they're looking at the first week of December, if I recall correctly, uh, for that. So I encourage anybody uh, who has an interest in, in where and how the city grows uh, to stay tuned to both of those neighborhood planning processes and attend uh, the requisite uh, public meetings and uh, share their thoughts and feedback. Absolutely, uh, and uh, we'll be uh, taping some of those, uh, so if you miss it, you can check that out, but your chance to provide input on those uh, mm -hmm. important uh, neighborhood plans. There's also an uptown, uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, you'd call it planning process, yeah. like, uh, but it's a, a team up with UW. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that one mm -hmm. as well and getting participation needed. Sure, so uptown is uh, the neighborhood that is near the intersection of Lacey Road and Highway 14, uh, the new interchange that was put in about 10 years ago now. And there is a capstone project that is done by a class at the UW-Madison for graduating seniors that lasts an entire school year long. So we submitted <clears throat> the visioning uh, opportunity for Uptown uh, as a potential consideration for a senior student who might be interested in this as a capstone project. And fortunately, we were selected uh, for this particular project by a senior at UW-Madison. So we will also have a steering committee for this particular uh, project as well, consisting of a number of uh, business and or property owners in the Uptown neighborhood, a couple of residents, again, city staff, and uh, so forth. So we're really looking to say, see what, uh, what makes sense for that area. You know, that's been identified in the city's comprehensive plan as, as being a high density uh, neighborhood with a transit focus with you know some more amenities uh, such as restaurants entertainment and those sorts of things um, but unfortunately it's taken us a little while to to achieve that vision and we felt that it would be appropriate uh, to work with all the folks that I've mentioned to determine okay are we still on the right track here is this the appropriate vision for this location and if so how do we how do we kind of jump start it and really get it to uh, to begin to come more and more to fruition there. 
Yeah, and again, uh, same thing, uh, participation from the neighborhood, residents, mm -hmm. uh, stakeholders, as mentioned, uh, can tar participate in this one and in, in those meetings. We'll keep putting them out there, letting people know that they're coming mm -hmm. up uh, so you can check into those, and we'll check in with you mm -hmm. uh, on uh, updates uh, on those uh, projects. Want to get into business luncheon, uh, just yeah. happened uh, this week, uh, taking a break for a little mm -hmm. while, but we came back with a bang. We sure did. Uh, with a, a great keynote, uh, mm -hmm. plus uh, coming back to one of our uh, area businesses. Uh, Promega and checking mm -hmm. out the Kornberg Center. Yeah. It was a nice event. It, it really was a great event. And before I talk about the event, I do want to recognize, uh, you know, Mike Zimmerman and Joyce Fry in our economic development department uh, who really took the lead on putting this particular event together and, and doing an outstanding job with it. And then, of course, FAC TV team for their work on it. There was a number of City Hall employees who participated to help uh, you know, whether it's give out name tags or set up tables, tear down things, direct people from the parking area, you name it, it was a team effort and quite honestly I think it went off really well. Of course we want to thank Promega for hosting us at the Kornberg Center as you had mentioned and uh, also the keynote speaker as you had mentioned was uh, our own Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers. Uh, so it was quite an honor to have him uh, attending and speaking at that uh, business luncheon. And there were, after a four-year hiatus, as you had mentioned, uh, largely due to COVID, uh, approximately 300 people who had signed up for the business luncheon. And it was a great event to connect with folks that we maybe haven't seen in a while. Uh, it was nice to just watch people mingle, you know, and, and, and kind of re rekindle some connections and or just, you know, continue existing ones that have been ongoing for quite some time. And it was a great opportunity for members of city staff to see members of our business community. And again, uh, we thank everybody for their, their work behind the scenes and putting it on and, uh, and for hosting. It's funny that when you say connections, I had seen there were two uh, two former alders that I had not seen mm -hmm. in I bet you five years mm -hmm. uh, that were there. But you're right, connecting uh, and sharing uh, what's been happening in Fitchburg, uh, not only celebrating 40 mm -hmm. years this year, but in the last several years, a mm -hmm. lot of things have happened. So right. uh, it's kind of cool it all comes together. And yeah, city staff, uh, mm -hmm. uh, everybody who uh, puts that on uh, makes it uh, something special here in Fitchburg. So thank you to the businesses and mm -hmm. Chad. Thank you for uh, joining us on another update. We'll Absolutely. catch you. Uh, the next your final one what you we're gonna do like a, a, a showcase of the year like yeah. let's look back Chad <clears throat> highlights of 23 yeah we can yeah. do a whole show on that what sounds good hopefully I've generated some <laughs> good good, good. <laughs> just good yeah. all right uh, Chad Brecklin uh, your city administrator will have him back in the month of December thank you Chad okay.